Hello and welcome to the Dataset Explorer module showing how to run a survival analysis. Uh, in this module we'll be using a study that is a public study about breast cancer uh, and can be seen here in the left panel and we will be running a survival analysis on the study. In order to learn more about the original study you can simply right click on the study name and select show no definition and read the abstract and other information about the study at your leisure. However, we will be running some new analysis on this particular study. So in order to do that within Transmart, the very first step is always to select your subset, and we will be selecting the entire study as our subset. And once we've done that, we can navigate to the Advanced Workflow menu. As you can see, it has persisted the fact that we've selected the entire study as our subset. And the next bit of instruction it's informing us of is that we need to select an analysis from the Analysis menu. So in order to do that, we click on the analysis menu and select survival analysis. And we see that there are three boxes that appear in order for us to provide information to the software to run the analysis. The time box is how we specify the time variable for the survival analysis. The category box allows us to sort the data into a variety of categories. And the censoring variable allows us to select the individuals in the study who had the event which corresponds to the appropriate time. So in order to do that, we simply open the folders in the, in the study as, uh, as we do for all studies. And uh, as we can see here, we have two time fields. We have disease duration at follow-up in years and number of years to metastasis. In this particular uh, analysis, we're gonna select the disease duration in years, which is the survival time for this particular study. And the censoring variable that's appropriate for this analysis is the fact that the patient died since, that's, since the, we're doing overall survival. So we can simply drag patient death, yes, into the censoring variable and run the analysis. The only variable that's actually required to run the, ver the analysis is the time variable, but adding the other variables will improve the analysis. So as you can see here, this results in a survival curve, which is the traditional Kaplan-Meier curve. And uh, we, only, we don't have any categories, so we're doing survival on the entire study, which is why we have these error bars. And as in a traditional Kaplan-Meier curve, a step down in the graph indicates a true patient death, and a hashtag indicates an individual within the study who had a survival time shorter than the overall length of the study, but did not have a recorded death. Uh, since we didn't provide categories, we cannot generate a Cox regression, which would be the, st the uh, standard statistic accompanying a survival analysis but we do provide some overall uh, other information about the graph. So to rerun the analysis and specify some categories, we, would, we will first start with a pretty simple one, which is the met metastatic status. So we can do that by simply dragging the metastasis status folder into the category box and rerunning the analysis. So this will allow the software to sort the patients based on whether they had metastasis or not. And as can be expected, metastasis is highly correlated with survival, and so the two groups are very disparate in their survival times. And now we have a Cox regression result with a very high hazard ratio, as we would expect, and uh, summary statistics for the two groups. We can also use numeric data in the category box by then employing the binning feature. So for example, if we were interested in whether age of diagnosis influenced survival, we can use that in our analysis by dragging the age of diagnosis field into the category box and then enabling the binning feature. The binning feature has uh, several aspects to it. Um, so first we have to specify whether the variable we're binning is continuous or not. In this case, it is continuous. We need to specify the number of bins we would like to use. I'm going to select two. And then for continuous variables, we can choose either whether we want to distribute the, the population evenly amongst the bins or space the bins evenly. I'm going to choose the first default option. And then uh, I'm going to hit run. Additionally, you can uh, select the manual binning option and specify the bin uh, steps yourself. So 
as you can see in this case, uh, we have two, uh, two lines, as we would expect, and it starts out that there isn't much of a difference in survival uh, between the two groups, but maybe in the end it does make a difference. And as we would expect with cancer in general, folks diagnosed earlier have, uh, have actually probably worse forms of cancer. Um, uh, it, and as before, we generate a hazard ratio and some statistics about the fit overall. Um, much like we can use the binning feature to use uh, numerical variables as the category, we can also use high-dimensional data as the category. So, for example, if we were interested in whether a particular gene being expressed is correlated with survival, we can simply pick the high-dimensional data node, which corresponds to gene expression, and drag it into the category box. We can then further uh, make our selections about this high-dimensional data by clicking on the high-dimensional data button, and a menu will appear, which will allow us to drill down into the data further. We only have one platform, so we only select one on this drop-down. We only have one sample type, so there's only one selection on this as well, and we do not have further designation of tissue and time points. The uh, next step is to simply start typing a gene name, and suggestions will appear as to what gene names uh, I might be interested in. This is controlled by Andre. I'm going to select BRCA1 as my gene. And then I'm going to select this Aggregate Probes button. This, probe, this uh, button allows uh, the software to use an algorithm developed by the UCLA Department of Genetics, which is called the WGCNA algorithm. And this algorithm selects the probe that is most representative over, of the overall gene expression of a particular gene. So uh, my selections are persisted in this menu once I've selected Apply Selection. Uh, I need to use binning since this is a continuous variable, and I'm going to keep the same parameters on my binning. And I'm going to hit run, and uh, much as it did before, um, the software should come back with a graph and some statistics. So as you can see here, uh, expression of BRCA1 is, as we might have expected, correlated with survival um, pretty highly. And uh, we can look at the hazard ratio which is not particularly high, but is, is perhaps significant. And um, we can look at the distribution of subjects within the groups. As before, we can save our data by either clicking on the Save to PDF button, which is located in the top right-hand corner, or we can actually download the data that was used to run the statistics by clicking on the Download Raw R Data button. This will uh, start a data download and produce a, zip, um, a zipped file of the data, um, which will include both a picture of the graph and the actual statistics generated, as well as the raw data that was used to run the analysis.